Hello, everyone. This is Chala Dinkoy, CEO and founder of The Repositioning Expert, coming to you live with another Tuesday Tea Time with Chala. With my trusty never tea, I haven't had tea in years on this show. Um, this is my protein. Unfortunately, I'm trying to build muscle, fortunately or unfortunately. So I am speaking to um, potentially a new, a little bit of a new audience today. Um, I have a new B2C client who's interested in what I'm talking about. I have a friend, a very close friend who is uh, starting a business that's going to be B2C. So I am thrilled to open up my wisdom, such as it is, about uh, marketing and targeting and target markets to not just the business to business, the B2B world, but the business to consumer B2C. Let me take a sip. Ooh, when it congeals and there's like a floating top, doesn't that sound delicious? All right, so what are we talking about? Um, let me talk to you about what, how I know about this stuff. For 18 years, for those of you who don't know, for 18 years, I used to work for B2C companies like Pepsi, Pizza Hut, Frito-Lay. And for many, many years, um, I bought and sold and launched products to B2C markets and did a ton of research on how to develop the positioning, which always included who's our target, how do we figure out the target, and then researched it and then brought the um, product to life and, and um, was that was my job to bring new products to market and then to make sure that they were profitable and so on. So after 18 years, when I left corporate, I started doing this to businesses who are trying to sell to corporations. And I would look at them as a product in the market. Where do we position them as a gap in the market into the gap in the market? And how do we position them in a way that's going to serve the best target? So let me then go back to explaining to you uh, the targeting mistakes, which is today's topic. Every business that's trying to grow or launch needs to figure out their target because without knowing your target, here's why you need to know. You need to know who to market to. You need to know uh, who to hang out with, to sell to. You need to know who to invest in, to introduce you to your target and who whose pain that you're going to become an expert in and whose pain you're trying to solve. And you need to know whose language to speak in. So without having a very clear vision of who your actual target is, you will not be able to do any effective marketing. You will be constantly doing trial and error, throwing spaghetti at the wall, see what comes back with an actual client and be losing tons of years and money and become a statistic where businesses just fail and can't keep cash flowing. We don't want that for you. So here's my golden rule of targeting as a marketer for many, many years is humans self gather in only two ways, either through industries or interest groups. So if they're interested in something, so when I have B2B clients, we look at industries. What industry can we target? And industries are, you know, um, healthcare is an industry. IT is an industry. Construction is an industry. Um, there's many, many industries. Um, communications is an industry. Marketing is an industry. The other uh, bucket is really more geared for B2C business to consumer, which is by interest. So People self-gather by the fact that they're interested in yoga. They self-gather by the interest of, let's say, you know, my son is on the spectrum of autism. So moms who have sons on the spectrum of autism self-gather. Um, divorcing women, that was one of my clients. She targeted divorcing women. There were 22 meetup groups in Toronto alone. There are so many different ways of looking at foodies, for example. They self-gather because they're interested in food and talking about food and cooking together. Um, just look at what are the interests of the people. In fact, look at, um, you know, all, all the ways that they, that they gather in those groups, like Facebook groups, or you can have interest groups, or you can have interest groups through um, uh, meetup groups. You can have interest groups through even LinkedIn groups. So look for interest groups if you're targeting um, B to C. Now, pick one interest group or industry to start with if you're going to have a target. And here's why you need to consistently get in front of them 
over and over and over again and deliver that message of the fact that you can solve their specific problem. So you want to pick one of the two of either an industry or an interest group because they self gather on a monthly or weekly basis. So you don't have to do the heavy lifting. They're already self gathering. Um, the second reason is um, you want to go into groups to network and market where 70% of the concentration of that group is made up of the same kind of is homogeneous, made up of the same kind of person. So it's any crowd you go into any um, place you want to market your services or your product, you want to make sure that they are self gathered into that kind of concentration. And that only happens if they self gather by industry or interest group. Uh, the other reason why you want to pick one is you want to use the same jargon, insider jargon and language as they do so that you can seem like you're an industry insider or an, in, an interest group insider. Then the other reason is you want to have a rinse and repeat marketing plan uh, where you'll always know where to find them because they're, they're on schedule. They have associations, organizations, they have gatherings, they have... Um, pre-organized scheduled events where you can intercept them. And so here I'm coming to the, the end of, you know, my live, which is the three targeting mistakes. So I see this all the time. So once I take you through the targeting mistakes, I'm going to tell you how to actually do your targeting so that how we do it, I'm going to take you through that. So the first one is I actually mentioned it right at the introduction is called the spaghetti on the wall or falling into your niche, which is guessing. So you'll, you'll uh, recognize there's some, for example, um, mortgage brokers, realtors who have fallen into a target niche because, for example, they belong to that geography or they belong to that ethnicity or they belong to that community. Whatever it is, they seem to have fallen into it and they're doing really well. That's amazing. But how likely is it that you're going to just simply fall into by accident or by guessing the right target market? It's the wrong way to approach how to, to target. It's not strategic. It's not, um, not pot potentially it's, it's not the right fit just because you have the same ethnicity as, you know, the people that you're targeting. Maybe there's a much bigger profit potential in a completely other market that you could have saturated, but because you didn't know how to pick your target market, which I'm going to tell you about later, you haven't been able to make them the most of the business. So that's number one is that throwing spaghetti at the wall. Oh, I'm going to try this group. Okay. If it takes, then, you know, I'm going to stay with them. If it doesn't, then I'm going to go on to the next one. There's a much better, more strategic and systematic way to figure that out. So do not throw spaghetti at the wall to figure out your target. Number two is um, following trends. So this is actually interesting. My friend that I was telling you about who is going to start a business was advised by a friend who's highly anal analytical that, um, uh, this, there's this emerging trend around what he's doing. So the emerging trend for, um, construction, for example, is that there's increasingly a larger number of elderly who want to stay in their homes and will therefore need upgrading of their, you know, homes and the layouts in order to be able to stay. So following trends is amazing if you have the rest of the picture. So one of the things that we're going to look at and I'm going to show you is what is the viability in terms of the, the margin that you want to make in terms of the pay and the price that you want to get from that target group is one of the three things that we ask about. And it's so important. So in this case, I knew I know from previous work with other clients who have targeted that same senior group that wants to stay in their homes and they could never find enough of a margin. There was always a higher margin and offering a slightly different offering to a high net worth boomer that's traveling and golfing and just, you know, doing everything but staying in their own home. So there was such a huge dichotomy in those two different target markets and um, they were able to afford such different things. So there was a huge difference in um, the two marketing um, targets. So I just want to make you aware that following trends is not the way to potentially pick your target. 
it could hurt you. So you have to do the, the three steps that I'm going to take you through at the end of this. So the third mistake that I see um, companies are making is allowing SEO, search engine optimization, to do the picking. And I'll give you an example of a client that I had in one of my courses. They were a closet organizing company. They were just an organizing company. But because the SEO company they hired did, looked at the number of searches that had to do with organizing, the number one hit was closet organizing. So they changed their whole targeting to households of <coughs> their geography. And I think they were in Oakville to just everyone who had a closet, which was super, uh, you know, generic, but it, it was also, they bordered it by, I guess they bound the target by the geography because they had, um, they had the Oakville um, radius. So what turned out after we did the strategic work was that everybody was doing closet organizing and the number one uh, niche that they needed to target was the high net worth larger homes with the specific uh, postal codes for the high net worth homes to do uh, garage organizing so there was a huge difference in margin there was a huge difference in messaging and targeting so when you let seo pick instead of you using strategy to figure out how to target it will always hurt you because it's never telling the truth. What does tell you the truth is here's what I'm going to take you through. How do you pick a target? So first, I want you to write down every single um, industry or interest group, depending on whether you're B2B or B2C, that you know can reach or are interested in selling to or working with or have been with. OK, so just write it down. I call it the blue sky exercise. Number two is I want you to rate every single um target on, based on a one to 10 scale of 10 being the best fit of one is the dollar potential to pay you for what you do. Number two is for the reach of how many of those people do you know in your natural networks and can actually get into easily get into their monthly meetings or, or annual meetings and how frequently you can reach them. So reach is the number two. And number three is fit for you. So for example, if you have an affinity to animals and you know you, you're thinking of targeting meat companies such as what my um one of my clients was a vegan and her largest client was a meat company and um it was the fit for her was zero so she had to let go of that niche and that target and had to pick someone else so that's what i want for you to think about so what we do with clients is we first make the list and then we do the scoring based on those three criteria that I mentioned. And then, of course, this is all gut check. You don't know, in, in fact, whether they will pay you the money that you want. You don't know, in fact, whether you do have that access. And you, you pretty much can guess at the fit. But until you actually go out there and talk to these folks, which is the step number three, is I want you to talk to do the scores come up with the three top scores of the top three targets. And then I want you to talk to five of each of those targets. And I want you to actually ask them these questions around what pain they have, whether you, they would hire someone like you to solve it, whether they would pay that much to someone like you to solve it. And then don't forget to actually turn this into a sale by asking them whether they'd be interested in having another meeting where you could give them some tips and tricks around their pain and how to solve it. So that's the way to actually pick a target in that strategic and systematic way that I mentioned. It has to do with finding out the pulse of the market in, that, in the moment. It has to do with actually doing primary person research, which is not depending on Google, not depending on hearsay, but actually asking the people the horse's mouth to actually guide you to picking the right target. So I hope that was helpful. I rushed through as much information as I could. <laughs> if you have any questions as usual, reach out to me on the socials and I will see you next week. Take care.